Can you say hard hats, folks? Hard hats, lunch pails, steel to a boots? Anything short of a championship this year is a failure. Look real. at this boomer right here. You've just got so much talent here. Somebody said we need to apologize for Jalen. Can I call the John? What are we apologizing for? What do we say? What do we do? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Attaboy. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm paying attention tonight. Uh, attaboy. I'm just paying attention. He is. He's got you. John? I haven't seen you around these parts in a while. Did you? Well, I did sneak in from L.A. Uh, you for did. That, L.A. That. John. Yeah. That yeah. was a treat. Well, you, we know cool. why you did. We know why you did. That was a fun one to talk about because that was just a hilarious, uh, hilarious ending. Um, that was hilarious. You missed a good one Monday night. Yeah, we had a we you you know useless game <clears> against <throat> Charlotte, but me, Bobby, and Joe Sway, the kids' table at Thanksgiving. I like to call us. No Sherrod. We kept it going no, for no. an hour and a half plus. No Sherrod, no. but he's here tonight. No boomers. That was a boomer for ah. you, but tonight. I guess it's the early bird special. The Ooh, boomers are back in the building. What yeah. I want to say, boomers are back in the right building. Here. Look at what's going on here. What is it? Is that Isaac? No, come on. PXG. PXG. Oh, PXG. Okay. Wait a second. I'm so the glad you said that, John. Where's the my PXG? They, they they all came in. They came in like two weeks ago, and I haven't even gotten one yet. They just came in. Let him finish, Jimmy. How are they? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Give us a spin. See so. It's like you know you you know those like stretchy golfy sort of shirts, yeah. But it's yeah. just it's just awesome. They're Letting so the boys light. Breathe a bit, I see. Huh? Oh my god, it, it, these are these are awesome. This is a sponsor on the show. We'll tell you Sherrod more about said PXP. I said we're gonna have to bleep that out because that's I know, I know. And you said they came. You said they came two weeks ago, and that's also disrespectful because this well, is no. the first time I'm wearing it. Disrespect to to me. Anyway, we'll tell you how you can save 10% on it. It's actually really worth it. It's great. I love this stuff. I love like the – I wear a lot of like Peter Millar. What other colors do we get? They're cool too. They got these funky ones, like different colors. This is one of the more muted ones. There's some funny – there's some fun designs here. It's really cool, really good stuff. I actually went to the store in Framingham to check it out. It's pretty cool. We'll tell you more about it. Okay. Um, I'm back. Jimmy's back. I ain't never going nowhere. Jimmy's going nowhere. You can't Sherrod, come back if you ain't never left. How are we going to miss you? Uh, Sherrod popped in, but he's gone. Yeah, that's all we're going to get out of Sherrod. Thanks, so buddy. Internet, internet is you. I bet you he, I bet you it was a power. I want to say he ran out of power or something like that. He gets a full fee. Yeah, he does. Yep. He, he will get a, a piece of the Super Chats tonight. He gets he gets a piece. Um, You know, uh, before, as we get warmed up... I, Fun, fun game. I thought good win. You know, some some coasting. It didn't really matter. You're playing a shorthanded team. They still were a threat. I I think the Celtics, the way they put the hammer down, that was pretty impressive. Um, they get to the 60 wins. They clinch the number one seed in the NBA. Championship runs through Boston. There you go. Um, all of this has been a foregone conclusion. I guess the bummer tonight is. This was the last game I think the Celtics were going to try to play anything close to real. And they did. They played a playoff rotation, as you saw. They really only went eight deep. Um, mm -hmm. Luke doesn't get in until the very end. No Tillman whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> so they played it straight. They played it like they would normally play. You know, as I said, there were some some lapses, some sloppy play here and there. But for the mm -hmm. most part, um, pretty locked in. Headlines, definitely Porzingis. Yeah, he's um, my number one. Uh, so that's good. So we'll get into him a little bit. <clears throat> also, a surprise team has slid into play-in territory after a loss tonight. We'll talk about that as well. Um, and, you know, a team we haven't talked a lot about as a potential first-round matchup is now in the mix. Uh, mm. So we'll talk about that also. Bucks go down to the Grizzlies a night after. Sherrod's back. They... Yeah, Sherrod's back. Um, so let's bring in Sherrod. Uh, for his thoughts. And Sherrod, will open it with you. Opening thoughts. What did you think? Tonight they did exactly what you were hoping they'd do, especially when you knew that Shea wasn't going to be playing. Uh, this is what you're supposed to do to good teams when their best player is out there. You hammer them. Uh, it took a little bit of while to get going. I thought Jalen, you know, first half was, I don't know where the hell he was first half, but second half he was real impactful. 
uh, did a lot of good things. And, and well, Porzingis is, but I mean, John, you, you hit the nail on the head. Porzingis is a story of this game. And I, I love the fact that he was going up against another, another lean seven footer who's basically a younger version of him. And he, you know, he handled his business. I mean, he clearly outplayed Chet in this game. It's, it wasn't even close. And there aren't a lot of guys who can say that in the league because Chet's really, really good. So <clears throat> I enjoyed it. This was a good game. They did what they, they were supposed to do. And as you pointed out earlier, the fact that you now have clinched home court throughout the entire playoffs, regardless of who you see on that opposite bench, again, that's what you're supposed to do when you've had the kind of season they've had. Uh, no let up. So, Yeah. Well, what was cool, I mean, they, they definitely got some switches. They got Porzingis on shorter guys. My favorite thing tonight was, you know, I don't have the, all the numbers, but I – it feels like the Porzingis in the post was that automatic cheat code that they had for the first uh, 50 games or so. And I felt like it went away for just a little spell, maybe in and around the time he battled his last injury and then he came back. It wasn't as automatic as it had been. It felt like he was forcing some of those up, maybe looking to draw contact, just wasn't just knocking them down with ease, just up and over people. And tonight was that, uh, you know, just too small sort of game where, Every time he got a switch and he had somebody that he wanted there, he got exactly the shot he wanted. It was a clean look. And again, looking at the line, 11 to 14, just ridiculous. Because I'll say this. I do think and I do wonder, you know, this is the wild card in Boston's offense, right? The, mm -hmm. the thing that keeps them from going flat or going, getting stuck and doing the same sort of thing. And the thing that's been one of the big differences that, and plus putting the ball in Derek's white, Derek White's hands and, uh, or, you know, getting him involved in actions either as a screener, but the Porzingis is the cheat code that's worked all year. And I wonder, you know, you have the, the, that one game where the, uh, where the Warriors decide to let Jalen shoot open threes. I do wonder if a strategy in the playoffs is just going to be, on the pick and pop, let Porzingis shoot that three and concede that shot above everything else. And 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 rather than the alternative, I was wondering if that would be the thing that teams might eventually go to. Um, so again, nice to see him knock down three out of three three pointers after a cold ish, you know, little stretch there as well. But in a pick your poison universe, I was wondering whether that might be a thing that they would do. But just to see him scoring from everywhere tonight with ease was awesome. Yeah, he's a yeah. he's he's a confidence guy. You know, what I mean, I see I see him get stronger as the game goes based on like when he sees a shot go down. So yeah, they gave him the Jalen Brown treatment and he made good on it. What I love is the five blocks. And if you look at the last, let's call it five or six games, this guy's been a block a, a block party, right? Five blocks tonight. I think he had four blocks uh the night before. He's had a couple with three recently, two. So I love the presence that he's given uh in the paint there and uh playoff p Sherrod. i think playoff p is, is is upon us here the real playoff p so uh i love what i'm seeing this is what we've been saying all year is all they gotta do is make sure porzingis is healthy for the start of the playoffs well here we are right i mean we're obviously not i'm not gonna wood here everybody but we're a few games away and he's he's looking at he's honestly looking the best he's looked all season right now that you know the shots are starting to fall he's active on both ends and um, I just love what I'm seeing out of Porzingis right now. So I think he's the X factor. I don't think that's a hot take, but he's he's my big X factor in these playoffs. I mean, I think we know that Tatum and Brown need help. They've shown it in past seasons. Well, what did they do? They got help this year. They got Porzingis. They got Holiday. But I think Porzingis is the real X factor. So if he's bringing his game, I, I don't know. I don't know who can beat the Celtics. But the, the thing you touched on, Jimmy, that I think is important is to understand that. He is the X factor at both ends of the floor. Yeah. And that to me is, is why he's so special for them in their, their journey, because he has the ability to impact the game in a significant way as a scorer, as a pick and pop guy, as a rebounder, as a shot blocker, as a shot alterer. He does a little bit of everything when he's at the top of his game and it just opens up the floodgates for the rest of those guys. Uh, you, you, when you look at the way that he was able to score the ball, I don't think it's a coincidence mm -hmm. that, you know, he, drew a little bit more attention and that opened things up for other guys like Al uh, and, and his teammates were making, I think a conscious effort to recognize those mismatches. I mean, there was at one point he has the ball like on an elbow and he's looking at in front of him and it's Gordon Hayward and he doesn't even jump. Just, just shoots right over the top of him. It, it, it was like, you know, you know, when you're a little kid, well, some of us are still little kids uh, <laughs> where 
Sorry, Jimmy. I had to do it, Jimmy. Had That's to do okay. it. That's and right. you just you just shoot it over the top without even jumping. That's what he was doing to a lot of the OKC players. Uh, and that's, and Al, same thing with Al. I mean, Al would get the ball on a block and Peyton Pritchard would penetrate, find Al, and Al would see that he'd got like Dort or someone else on him and just shoot over the top and we're not even jumping. They are going to need their bigs to be impactful because you know Jalen, you know Jason, they're going to get theirs. They're going to make their presence felt, but their bigs have to have a presence about them. And Porzingis has to lead that charge. And he's, he's doing that. And, and to your point, Jimmy, this is the healthiest he's looked really since the beginning of the season. Can't hear you, oh. bud. Yeah, John, yeah. They managed him perfectly, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, what did we say? Beginning of the year, 55 to 60 games? Mm -hmm. Great, fine. 65 would be the dream. He's yeah. 53. He'll end up playing 55, 56 for the year. You know, fall short of postseason accolades, but that doesn't matter. That's what you wanted. And it felt like every little teeny thing was managed just right. Okay, mm -hmm. couple of days here. A couple of things that were real that actually necessitated sitting for a couple of games, the ankle, the calf. Um, but everything else beyond that was just built in rest. And they did it all year long to the point that, like, I think you're going in – as fresh as you could have possibly hoped. You know, I, I think we're officially in the bubble wrap portion of things with mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people here. And I really mm -hmm. do think this is the last game you'll see. You'll see more than three regulars playing, you know, for, 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 you know, for, for the rest of the way, or it maybe, should be, maybe you'll get four, but I think you're going to be sitting two and three guys every game, the rest of the way, as you absolutely should enough to keep. I think you'll see some second half rests too. Guys mm -hmm. will go in and play, and then they'll just sit it out for the for the rest of the game. And that's great because you'll stay sharp, and that's what you want to do, and nothing matters. Uh, but the Porzingis thing is perfect. I think it's exactly what you wanted because that was the entire fear, right? It was like you pinch yourself sort of dream with how things are going with the team and the chemistry and the how good he looked. And it's like, well, I guess the only thing that can derail a finals run is Porzingis getting hurt. And right. so, mm -hmm. again – you're almost there. You've 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 pretty much made it, which is great. But again, you just see another flash of the chemistry and just how well everything works tonight. Those little moments where Jalen goes in and whips the pass over his head and Porzingis hits the three and then he's smiling ear to ear the way down the court. Like that stuff's great. Like they're definitely vibing still the way that they were all year long. You're just we're in that period of the schedule now where it's just Again, nothing really matters. Nothing's mattered right. for so long, and definitely nothing matters going forward. No, the, ever the, in anything. Yeah, I mean, the, the you know, we're, and we're I'm I'm assuming we're going to talk about him a little bit later, but I'm gonna just kind of throw his name out there now. Are the other playoff P, uh, Peyton Pritchard? Uh, no, listen, he, he 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 did not shoot the ball well, but damn, his command of the floor, seven assists, zero turnovers. I mean, he just. If this, if listen, if, if Peyton Pritchard were a impending free agent, this is the this is the game that you want teams to see. Uh, his ability to first of all hold his own defensively, uh, offensively make all the right decisions, and the shots that he missed were great, were good shots. He didn't take bad shots, uh, so he just didn't make as many as he normally can. But his ability to just absolutely manage the game was great. Loved it. Yeah. This is one of my favorite Peyton Pritchard. On games. the ESPN broadcast, I don't know who said it, but they're like. He was he was Pritchard was doing his Pritchard things out there, and they were just like, he's just a good player. And I think he said it like three times, like he's just a good player. I think, that, and I think that's really what it comes down to. Like, yeah, he's you know he's a good player, Sherrod. He's you know, a he good good player things. He's a good player, but I think he's expanding his role of being a good player. Like remember, for the longest time, it's like if he's not making shots, what the hell is going to give you? Yep. And now that's not the narrative anymore. I mean, it's like if he's not making an impact. What is he giving? And he has the ability to impact the game in multiple ways. He can knock down shots. Now he's doing more playmaking. Uh, now he's in, and he's even getting into the hockey assist game a little bit, where he's making the pass that leads to the assist. His game has really expanded in ways that I don't even I don't think the Celtics fully expected him to be this impactful when he plays. Uh, and and to me, he's the one guy I want to see playing a nice amount of minutes the rest of the way. I want to see him in the twenty to twenty five range. Well, it, it's it, that's the interesting thing with a, a lot of the guys who were question marks uh, on the bench coming in. Uh, Pritchard being one, because, you know, as we've said on the show and you just said here, uh, it was always a instant offense. He can knock down a three or two. He's got value. Anything else beyond that? I'm not really sure. 
areas he's been outstanding this year in ways that you didn't necessarily think it was commanding the offense. You know, he's the best ball handler on the team, but the, just the way he's commanded the offense, the smart, patient decisions, not forcing things up at the rim, um, but being able to, I love, I love the short guy um, off the wrong foot layup that you have to do to cheat, to cheat it. Because because they're loading up on the block for when you go off the left, so you shoot it off the right foot just to get it off a split second earlier. He's had a couple of those recently. I love those. Um, but the you know, passing, he's just been unbelievable. And then his on-ball defense is outstanding. His isolation defense is really, really good. So you have that. You have Sam Hauser, who's been extremely competitive uh, defensively. Uh, as well and then a couple things tonight he's shooting he's getting a guy on his shoulder and he's warding him off and he's hitting the you know the little mid the little mid-range uh, floater and things like that that you don't normally see he's freaking got he's got alley-oops he's catching alley-oops this year he's doing things beyond just the specialist and we thought they had we thought they could earn minutes just as specialists in the past. We're like, why do these guys hate shooters or hate offense? Right. Everybody comes in there has to be able to play defense and nothing else. But now you give these guys a little bit of playing time and a little bit of consistency. It goes back to what we said about all the, all the kids. You can't play them. Things. Look, look at Banton and Stevens, for example. Like, and I'm not going to say like we screwed, you Celtics screwed up here. If you played them, you might have gotten something. You didn't. You, you look at the numbers. Guys. Yeah. 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 I mean, you look at the numbers on. Yeah, they're putting up numbers. You know, obviously some bad teams, teams. but you, but you know it, they, yeah. but you know they can play though. I mean, that was the thing that we, I think, realistically you have had questions to play about. guys. Yeah. Yeah. To find you it have out. you have to play guys to get them into some sort of rhythm, and then you're seeing more things. Obviously, Neesmith is another option. I think Romeo was beyond salvation. I uh, I'll eat that one. <laughs> Will you finally? No. You're finally going to give up on that, aren't you? <laughs> never. Never. He's going to have a he, Gerald Green resurgence. He's in so China somewhere, dude. He's going to have a Gerald Green resurgence. He's going to disappear for a couple of years. He's going to come back, and there yeah. it is. But anyway, um, <laughs> so that's all good. Uh, somebody mentioned it here, uh, and we might as well. We're back in the bracket here, and we are in a oh, yeah. vicious Ooh. final four matchup Ooh. between – you got Tangwade, and he's your third center. Now, some people had been asking oh, us. No, 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 no. They're not playing. Oh, anymore. no. Luke's Lemon Squares. Some people have been asking us, like, what's the origin of these things? Mm. You know, and, and, and where did they come from? Which one do you want to hear from? Well, so so he's your third center versus Blaine Pie. That was, that was the matchup on Monday's show. I don't know if we have the results for that yet. But we showed that one first last time. But it's up to you. I mean, you can go with the live, the one that's live now. The you live got one now? Well, the one that's live now is you got Tangway versus you got Tangway versus Lemon Squares. Here's here's a reminder of where the uh of where the uh where those Lemon things squares. came from. We'll start with Lemon Squares. It just beat you by double digits after being down by 28 in your building. Bobby, yeah. you were in there. Uh paint us a picture of the general vibe of this team uh feeling, you know, uh what after this Happy? loss. Well, Luke Cornett. Some no, lemon no, desserts. no, 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 I can't do it. I can't. Stop. I can't. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't do it. I'm going to give you two minutes. Is it over? Is it over? Get a 20 second timeout. Give me one of Joe Mazzula's timeouts and use that thing right now. Timeout. Timeout. How, Bobby, get how, back here. How did that happen? How, how, did, those how did the team heal? Well, the guy who played two minutes didn't like it. Well, Bobby, get back like here. Luke Cornett, we, we, who was we uh, watching the no, no. I was trying to paint a picture of the locker. Hey, 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 I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. It was unfair. Go ahead. Here's Go ahead. here's where I'm going with it. Made a bunch of desserts, lemon, uh, some sort of lemon pastry, untouched, <laughs> untouched, untouched <laughs> in the locker room. Only Mike Muscala <laughs> tried one after the game. In the desserts? locker room it was. Oh, Luke made them. <laughs> that's it yeah so now you know why there's a bracket but it was a Luke great Levin. story i feel bad we jumped on bobby but it was just really funny like no they gotta play it, two it, minutes at work you know what it, it really wasn't a was great story really well i mean it's just a funny observation how sad Guy brought in it? some freaking pastries that his wife gave him to, to get rid of and nobody wanted them bobby was legitimately <laughs> upset and hurt that no one ate luke's pastries right and he was like, 
man, what's wrong with these guys? This is a bad vibe in this locker room. They're not eating free pastries. Bobby was trying was to paint the picture for us. He was. That was great. Was anyway, vote picture. vote on the bracket. We're going to run it all the way through the show um, <clears throat> here, and you guys get now, to vote you on You got it. Tang, wait, everyone – should know what that is if you've been watching this year, but basically we'll play. You got Tangweight a little bit later. And oh, we have that little... origin too. Oh, I've got things. We I've should play them both at the same time. Otherwise, everyone's going to vote for Luke. Yeah, you know which one of us has producer credits to their name, Jimmy. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Jimmy, you got sunned. Hey, son. <laughs> Jimmy, I Jimmy son. credits to his name, but new name, Jimmy's Jimmy Jack, son. Jimmy's Jack in my chat all the night. Only producer this is what, I this... see is producer Amit. This is why this is why Nick hates you, by the way. You just got oh, Jimmy Son right there. There's a lot Damn. of reasons. Yeah. We also want to tell you, we got to tell you a little bit about this, right? Our PXG. You see it? Yeah, we see it. Ooh. Yeah, you're Mr. Producer Boy's wearing it. Might as well Mr. do the Producer ad Producer Boy too. is wearing it right now. You can save. You can save 10% on all apparel. You go into PXG Peak Performance Golf Wear. It is golf season. It's also incredible high-quality golf clubs uh, among the best go, in the game. But the clothes, premium material, technology, peak performance, good-looking shirts, good fit, really good stuff. We got them at the office today. Everybody was really psyched. So golf trips, getaways, whatever you want. It's awesome. I've been wearing it all day. I couldn't wait to do the show tonight. Again, elevate your style game on and off the course with PXG Spring Summer 2024 Collection. Head over to pxg.com slash garden. Save 10% on all apparel. That's pxg.com slash garden. Right, Does it make you a better it. golfer, though? Nah, man. I kind of yeah, I kind of quit so. golfing. Yeah. You quit golfing. That's the most I quit sad. all the time. That is the most beta sad thing I've ever heard. I, I quit all the time. I know. You'll be back. I quit all the time. I'll take you I, to the woodshed I, this summer. Okay, let's do it. Anyway, we talked about Porzingis being awesome. Here's Joe talking about Porzingis being awesome. Here he comes. All right, come on, producer boy. Hit the clip. My hands You're are... about to be Wally pipped. Look at this. Look at this. Uh... This is Hands free. Doesn't like, yeah, like we didn't have. There's nothing else I can do. Post passes. We had very few turnovers in the paint if they collapsed. Our spacing was rather good if it was a post mismatch or if it was in the middle of the floor, and so they tested our discipline to attack the switch. You know, uh, with size and physicality, and uh, I thought our guys did a great job of trusting that, which allowed us to open up some other things throughout the game. Yeah, and and that was Joe talking KP. Hmm. Nice of him to say that. Very nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we had better. We had better an, an, uh We did. We had better things to say. He did. Analysis. That's the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Producer boy, next year's producer absolutely. Boy, next. I just, yeah. I, I just put, a, I literally put a note in my email. I never want to hear another Joe soundbite like that again. By the way. Yeah, okay. Ahmed, come on. John Come might on, actually producer. have to be the producer after that. Come on, producer boy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it it, ro it keeps rolling downhill. Apparently, yeah. Jimmy's higher on the hill than me. It rolls down to me and the meat on it. But that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Come on, producer boy. I thought I thought he was good. Come on. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hey, look at he he bet on the Grizzlies and he won. So he's gonna give us a couple of fucks of his winnings. Was this KP's best game? That's like tip, that's like tip of the dealer. Hmm. I like that. I don't know if I'm qualified to say off the top of my head that it was his best game, but I'll put it in his top 10 for sure. The Celtic, he's had, yeah. He's had some good games. Yeah, we're talking about Celtic. He's had some, maybe top five. He's had some really good games this year. I'd, I'd put it as a top five for sure for the way he played on both both ends of the court, the start that he had. I mean, if it wasn't for Porzingis to start this game, I don't know where the Celtics would have been because it wasn't Brown. Tatum was pretty quiet. So mm -hmm. Porzingis was the guy in the first half here. Um and so, yeah, I'd say it was a, it was one of his best games for sure. Top five, I'll give it. Yeah, but, I mean, his start to the season was pretty damn impressive. I mean, he dropped 30 on the Knicks in the opening. Yeah, well, night. that's in the top five, so, too. Yeah, yeah. So, he's, he's had some good ones. He's, he's definitely had, had his share of really good games. Uh, dropped 29 against, him, I think, in Bede uh, in November. Um, yeah, top five. Top five comfortable. Comfortably top five. Top five, top five yeah, Porzingis. Well, Again, best, best, most important wow. thing is just looking good now. 
you know? Like, in addition to healthy, you just didn't want, you know, it to just fade, you know, like a right. portion of the game to just not be as good as it was at the beginning of the year. And again, I'm not saying I was worried about the post-up stuff. It's like, oh, that that was automatic. I want that back, you know? Um, yeah. So it was, again, it's nice to it's nice to see it. But again, it's just, it's the timing of it. You talk about like dumb cliches, like clicking on all cylinders, but ultimately you just want to be, uh, what's the, what do you want entering the playoffs? R- rested, relaxed, staying sharp, you know, not friggin' fighting, clawing and scratching and fighting for your life yeah. here. And, and 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 best thing about it is like, I I still think they're professional enough, the guys that they're putting out there to take the game seriously when they do play. For the most part, I mean, you have a couple of lapses here and there on a few possessions. I thought you know Jalen didn't have a good first half, um, and then turned it on huge in the fourth quarter. Whatever. Uh, on the whole, they treated this game like a real game, even though they knew they were playing against crap teams. So the guys, you know. They kept it sharp here, um, yeah. which is nice to see after you know the couple of couple of dog shit you know efforts out in Atlanta. Um, yeah, you know good good bounce backs. And and they were due to have a couple of really bad games. If you look at this season in its totality, I mean, it's you have to really look hard to find them having two crappier back to back games than the ones we saw in Atlanta. It's just that just hasn't been who they are. Uh, and for whatever reason that it just worked out that way. But the, the thing about this team and Tatum has kind of touched on us a little bit. And I think there's more to it than what he's kind of feeding us, but they, I still think that this, this season has been it, it, for them. This has been a direct reflection of we're not going to let what happened to us last year happen again. We're not going to allow ourselves to ease off the gas totally and just completely allow teams to do whatever they want to with us, no, even though we know it's not going to have a significant impact on our playoff seating and things like that. They play with an edge now, even when they don't have to. And that's when you start realizing you're dealing with not a team that wants to go deep in the playoffs. You're talking about a team that expects to win a championship. Um, that's what teams that win a championship do. They play hard regardless of who the opponent is. They find ways to win regardless of, you know, whether they're a two point favorite or a 22 point favorite. And other than those back to back games in Atlanta, they really haven't had shown any type of track record of not being that type of team. Uh, and so, you know, Tatum definitely takes his stuff personally. Jalen definitely takes it personally. And when we start seeing those guys that ended the bench, they're going to take it personally because they know that they're on the outside looking in come playoff time. Show Joe that you can actually do some things so that maybe just maybe you might be able to carve out a couple minutes here and there. So at this point in the season, even when you don't see as much Tatum and Brown and those guys, you're still going to see, I think, a pretty good version of this team because the guys that are replaying are going to have something to play for. Yeah, no doubt about it. I left this comment up here because no, I left this comment up here because I wanted to uh, pivot to it. Um, You know, as we said, no one's no one's making a big deal about a a one bad one, not great half of a game from a player. But, um, you know, Brown looked really bad, sloppy early. And a lot mm-hmm. of people were wondering, is there an injury? Is this left hand a thing? Um, Sherrod, you're there. Any indication he was physically limited in any way tonight? Not officially. But the thing about Jalen, even when he's been healthy, that left hand has been a little shaky at times. Uh, and the fact that he seemed to kind of right the ship in the second half makes you think that maybe it wasn't uh, a health thing and maybe it was just him just having a bad game. But I, knowing that at some point this season, that hand has not been right, I would like to see him play the fewest games remaining of their starting five. I, because he's the one guy that you know when he's healthy, he can get you 15, 20 points just like that. Um, Tatum has that same ability, but the thing about Tatum, even when Tatum isn't hitting, he's going to keep shooting. Jalen has a tendency has a tendency from time to time to kind of go in a shell a little bit if he's not knocking down the shots that he wants to. I want Jalen to be as healthy as possible because but I think he he's was, the he was also walking around. I felt like, and again, I couldn't tell if he was just conserving energy. Like I'm not going to spend too much of it here, but right. there was a lot of walking around, especially on defense, and just you just looked. Again, I, I don't know if it was physical or just simply like we know what this is tonight, you know, and I'm I'm not I'll, I'll turn on. And again, the fourth quarter probably makes a lot of people feel a lot better about anything right. that you might have 
he turned it up over watching the first half because you're like, yeah. oh, that gear was there, which yeah. makes me believe he was just kind of coasting rather than hurt. But I, I, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I go ahead, Jimmy. You had it. Well, he's hit his games. He's hit the minimum games that he needs to hit to qualify for like awards, right? He's at 66. So it makes no sense to play this game if you have any amount of pain going on anywhere. This game mm-hmm. means nothing. The Thunder aren't playing SGA, and it means more to them standings wise than it means to the Celtics. It means absolutely nothing to the Celtics. So if there's there's no, it makes no sense for Jalen Brown to play through pain right now. So. I can't imagine that that's what it was. I think maybe he just had an off night. Maybe he's thinking about it a little bit. Maybe there's just some general soreness and he's favoring it. But, John, you're, you're muted again. I can't hear you. Just a lot of people keep saying in the comment he's holding his hip. He's favoring things. He's, you know, sure. I mean, he could be holding. banged up, general soreness. It's a long season. But, again, like, don't force it. I, I do think Sherrod's right that, you know, you're going to see some guys really start to take some time off here. I mean, who's going to even make that trip to uh, – that one last Milwaukee. Game. Who's gonna yeah. even make that trip? Why even get on the flight? Why even risk the the plane going down? Like, don't even get on the flight. They should just cancel the game. You know what I mean? Like, the, this means nothing. That just got really morbid, Jimmy. <laughs> well, it's like, don't risk it. Just, just go stay. Work out here. These no things go down. Mess yeah. your sleep up. You know, like all that stuff. You gotta sleep in a hotel. Fly yeah. back. Don't even send them. They have six out of their next seven games are home. Just keep it here. And then you've got your two home games to start the playoffs. Chill. Just it makes chill. sense. Kind of earned you, it. You got you guys kind of earned that, right? Yeah. But you know what? It, it, here's the thing, though. And, and I think this is why you'll, you'll still see those guys play a little bit, even if they don't play their usual minutes. Uh, I keep coming back to Tatum's comments uh, earlier this year. Maybe it was in the offseason about wanting to be there for fans. Fans come to see them play, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. They're going to play. They just may not play as many minutes, but they're going to play at least. There's what six games left. There, I, I anticipate they'll be in at least half of them. Yeah, at least I, half. Listen, I mean, you you can't take a you can't take two weeks off for the playoffs. I get it, but the point is, ease into it, right? I mean, yeah. these guys don't need to go balls up. They don't need to play through pain right now. You right. Know what I mean, I would take baths, not showers, because you can slip in the shower. You know, mm-hmm. like a lot of bad bad shit can happen. Thank you. you know, Agreed. like. <laughs> It's like I would blend of, all your food, blend it up, drink it with through a straw. Food for sure. I don't want anyone you know, choking. I don't want anything to go wrong. Just smoothie <laughs> diet the rest of the way. Play players <laughs> sticking a toe into the toe. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's too hot. Yeah. It's too yeah. hot. Yeah. You can't take a shower. Only, use only plastic wear. Remove by all means, remove all vases from your house. You know, like because yeah. you know those ooh. shit that no shit stairs. falls. No and stairs. you break it, you know? Yep. Mm. Stay yeah. away from um, what would what, what, what Marcus Smart do? Stay away from like pictures, Picture no brand. vases, like, punching anything, no vases, no vases, <laughs> nothing. I want like profession. I want I want the best <laughs> professional drivers chauffeuring these guys around for the next two weeks. I don't want them sitting in traffic, even nothing. Yeah. If I'm gonna sit the guys, I'm gonna sit them against Portland. I'm gonna sit them against Charlotte. And I'm gonna sit them against Washington. Yeah, no water in your plants. We don't want anything to burst, as somebody in the comments also said. Yikes, you want to talk about dark. Yeah, jeez, dude. Damn. See, this is the portal that you've opened, Jimmy. I'm blaming this is you for everyone's this. heads are going. Damn, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah, tubs can be dangerous, too, John. Tubs can be dangerous. They can. Uh, here's uh, – here's, all right, so we talked about Jalen Brown in the hand. Here's producer boy – in three, two, one. Yeah, uh, I think I got like a, a sprain or, you know, like a, a strain, what? Uh, a ligament in my don't, hand. But don't doctors what? tell you? I think it's fine. You know, it's you think it's fine? Something I'm not concerned with going forward, but it would bother with me, it bother me a little bit tonight. But part of it is, you know, working through it, playing through it, because that gives you a little bit more information towards down the line if you know things were to get any worse. But I think there's nothing to be concerned about. Uh, I'm I'm concerned. So I'm concerned. let me ask you this: I'm everything, wearing, e- like a, everything like a that he tire? said, everything that he said was concerning. Everything, every yes. single word of it, all of it. And so this is where I can't. I don't know if it's. I'm not going to say being dramatic, but you know, sometimes players just say stuff that doesn't actually 
jive with what's really going on. Like Holiday, for example, said right. uh, it went numb. And it's like that actually probably wasn't the right way to describe what had happened. He had sprained his shoulder. It wasn't a, a nerve thing or a numb thing, but that's the word he used. What? Can you play it one more time? Yeah. But this thing, was like, time? this was a nightmare. Like, I think it's a sprain or a strain. Or, I or think ligaments it's fine, and... but ligaments damage. And maybe I'll just play through it just to see how it is. And if it gets worse, then we'll deal with it then. Oh, here we go again. I said, here we go again. Producer boy. Producer boy. Uh, I got a, like a, a sprain <laughs> or, you know, like a, a strain on a, a ligament in my hand. But I think it's fine. You know, it's something I'm not concerned with going forward. But it would bother with me. It bothered me a little bit tonight. But part of it is, you know, working through it, playing through it, because that gives you a little bit more information towards down the line if, you know, things were to get any worse. But... I think there's nothing to be concerned about. Then um, don't mention it. Then say nothing. Yeah, don't mention it. Don't get what is concerned. that? Is that like a Tron outfit or like a... <laughs> no Transformers meets you know? Yeah, I Wakanda. think honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna say tire. It's it's nothing except I. His, John, you, you his, can't do it, John. You know you can't do it because you so are again, concerned. We you need Jalen to walk around. No, no, no. With, no. Like, I think, think Jalen is like saying more than it is, not less than okay. it is. Okay. That's what I believe. Okay. I, I, I can buy that, but I'm concerned. Sure. I'm not He's lie. obviously I, seen a doctor. I a doctor's to obviously that told too. him strain or sprain or not. There's no ambiguity about it being one thing or another. I think he's probably seen a doctor and he said it's fine. And then he's saying, well, it hurts, so it must be a strain or a sprain. That's where I'm at. I'm there. That's I've arrived at that. How do we feel? I choose to believe that too. Because I think gonna help, that's right. That's going to help me get through the, the, the tomorrow and the next couple of days, I think. I, I, I'll get there once I get something a little bit stronger than this Dr. Pepper. Then I'll get there. <laughs> For now. I, I like Dr. Pepper. I, yeah. This is, it, like this is disturbing Pepper. to me. This is really disturbing to me. Uh, because even if it's minor, it's at least it's significant enough to where he's talking about it. And it's bothering him. And it bothered him tonight. And it's just like, if we know this is going to bother you or has the potential to bother you, how about we just like not play you so that we can avoid the potential of it bothering you in the regular season when these games at this point don't matter. And just let's deal with this in the playoffs when the games do matter. Yeah. Did you say <laughs> what the, what the, yeah, we oh, don't talk uh, about we're, that. We're, we're we gonna go to there, are we? We're gonna go there. We're gonna go there. Cool. I think he said. I think he said ligma. I don't know. No, he said ligament. He, he said ligament. I think he all said right. ligma. All right. Well, some people, some people aren't trusting JB that he's that he's all right. I'm not trusting I'm, him that it's that it's hurt, just, that it's a sprain. I'm not it, trusting that it's a sprain or a strain. I'm uncomfortable right now Ooh. with his status going to the playoffs. Right now, I think he'll be good, but my concern is that. Is it which hand is it? Or four, where it's going to bother him and it's going to be a problem. And he may be able to play 30, 35 minutes with it, but there are going to be moments where he's going to do something bad. And it won't because he has a bad handle, it'll be because his damn arm hurts, his wrist hurts. That's disturbing. We're Especially if, right or left. It's his left, right? It's his left. Yes. Yeah, it's his he left. Never, like nothing's going to change. He never had a left. The, the left sets up the right, Jimmy. I'm just kidding. You know, one every, hand washes the other, Jimmy. Just being a jerk. I know you're being a <laughs> all right, producer boy. Want to be? I, I love this, <laughs> uh, by the way. I, just when he discovered I, his left hand, now it gets freaking the, the he'll be hand. fine. Comments I am in the camp that I actually think it's overblown, but I we hope really it is. don't know. We I really don't know. I, I, I love I hope... people just kind of wish casting, like, like it'll be fine. We don't know. You, you and don't I hope know. they're right. I hope the guy they're right. I really do because Jalen has had such a great season that you would you would hate for something like this to just tarnish what has been a really good season for him. Um, but the fact that he put it out there, you know. Um, Where are we oh on boy. this? Oh boy. Orange. I'm orange. Wow. I'm yellow. I'm orange. I'm yellow. I just think it's Jalen talking. Yeah. 
I'm between okay. the yellow and, and the and the. We have two greens that look very similar. Which are you, Shira? You like you like the the true orange, or you like the burnt? Skin? No, I'm I'm no. There, there's the yellow, then there's the orange, and then there's the deep orange. I'm like yeah. in that the orange. Okay. 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 So you a little bit beyond about, the midway slightly point. Slightly above the midway point. Got yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'm on the other side of that. I don't believe it. I hope you're right, John. I don't believe it. I hope I hope you are in John. Do you believe Stradamus that JJ McCarthy right is going to get drafted by the Patriots, or do you choose not oh. to believe that too? Oh, that's happening. Who says you know that's that? happening. A lot of people think that. it's going to happen. Everybody is trying desperately to pretend Drake May isn't obviously the second best quarterback right now. In when hopes it's not that obvious, he, fall, he is. In hopes that he falls to them. That's what I believe. I think everybody wants. I think, you the think Patriots, everyone wants. Drake, you think that the yes that Drake May is better. Drake May over Daniel. I think Drake May. I think the Patriots want Drake May. I think they're hoping Washington takes Daniels. I think yep. they've always wanted May. I think half the disinformation about May or the whatever is coming from teams three or hoping to get the three, four, five. Like he's not even that good. I'll trade up for him. You don't even want him. Everyone's just trying to move up in there and hope. So to JJ get him. McCarthy is just being played right now. He's just yes, he's, he is. He's JJ dumb. McCarthy he's might be in the water. Might be Levis. JJ McCarthy might go like nineteen or twenty. Ooh, no! I saw a mock today that had him going second. And that it mock. Was, um, it Please was, don't tell yeah, me who this, did that because that's, that's, that's because it's it was it's, sharp. It's, Sharp's it's legit. Content, it's content season. L okay, let me put my producer hat on. I gotta producer talk about man. This. I oh, gotta producer. talk about this shit for another month. Okay. There's See, a line Jimmy, between producer the, man is in a building boy. now. Let's there's let's a line between I, I've had I've had become producer man. I've had Daniels two and May three in every mock for the last three weeks. I gotta freaking do something. Let's just throw McCarthy two and just light this shit on fire and see what people say. That's how it goes, you know. Like yeah. it just it's but no you way. want you want people to trust your opinion. No, you, don't. you want them to you click throwing shit at the wall. You want the you want the you want to start the conversation. For that type of content, you want clicks. Cl and then the aggregation. I used to could, your odds could McCarthy go second? Back One back. analyst seems to think so in his latest mock, and then everybody talks about it. No, I get it, but I mean, shoot, you still want to like you want people <laughs> to respect your pick. If you have JG McCarthy going second, they'd be like, "This guy, what's this guy?" Now we had JG McCarthy going second. He went fourteen. Yeah. Anyways, I think I McCarthy's know. McCarthy's going to end up being. I think people are obsessed with not that this is new, but it's a quarterback run like mm -hmm. teams are obsessed with finding the next guy and if mccarthy interviews well they're gonna fall in love and apparently that's what he's doing all right well we're gonna tell you speaking of falling in love everybody here seems to desperately want you got tangway to win i'm not sure what the voting looks wow. like right now really i did not see that one coming Me neither. what happened i have no idea we lost it and put it back on the stage. Um, I think this is a clip, Amit, maybe, of You Got Tangwayed. I have two clips in here. This no, might be no, the no, no. The other one might be – that one looks like oh, it's – Oh, that um, one's third center. Yeah, that's third, your third center. Yeah. We don't have it. Amit, we don't have it. We don't have Tangwayed right now. I don't think um, we can do – I don't think we could do it. Oh, it I know why we can't do Tangwayed. I know. Read. It's old ad reads. Can't yeah. do it. Right. Can't do Tangwayed, so we can't show the example. Which is too bad. Yeah. Well, too bad. It, so is uh, did Tangwayed did, got Tangwayed? Did third center crush Blaine Pie? Is that what happened? I actually didn't see the results. I have a feeling it probably did because Blaine I Pie shouldn't have. Blaine Pie shouldn't have beaten Farts, my dog. To be completely honest, but somehow it did. Yeah. I don't know how it did either. I don't either. Apparently, it was like three votes difference. Very cool. Oh, jeez, yeah. damn. But oh, I don't know. We've had some good Blaine Pies, I guess. Maybe tight one. Tight one. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, we're waiting on Bobby, perhaps Joe Sway to join us in a little bit. Uh, JB talked, Porzingis is talking now, uh, and we'll hear from those guys, uh, and continue on here. Uh, one thing I did want to move into, uh, a little interesting oh, nice. development tonight in the NBA, the Pacers <clears throat> have fallen into play in territory, the seventh seed after a loss to the Nets. Um, now they are in play. They are in play among the teams that the Celtics could potentially play in that first round. I don't know. Uh, they've been not good. 
Um, they're a little banged up as well. Uh, they've been really wildly inconsistent. And again, when I say it's a it's percentage points difference, they're in a virtual tie with the Heat for six. But them staying there is possible here uh, for sure. Throw them into the mix. You haven't talked about them. Everybody's had their given their feelings on Miami, on mm-hmm. Philly uh, as as possible opponents, and how how we feel about that. Rank rank Indiana among those three in terms of how you feel. Oh, I would probably put them near the back. Near the back. What does that mean? Well, look, I think those other teams are a little bit more bigger. You're threats. less worried about Indiana. Yeah, I'm opposite. I'm opposite that, Sherrod. I'm opposite that. Why? I think Indiana's style of play, at least before. I mean, let's be honest. The Indiana team has fallen off a bit. Halliburton's been in and out of the lineup with injuries. So, but I think Indiana's style of play, I mean, they're. So, you know, like they're obviously very offensive focused and mm-hmm. similar to the Hawks in that sense. So if you if you're scared of the Hawks, which I think not scared, but if you'd rather not play the Hawks, I think you got to th- treat Indy similarly because they want to push the pace. They want to run a run and gun offense. They want to get into a shootout with you. They don't want to play defense, but they want to shoot, dance around. You know, the Halliburton wants to dish out 20 assists. And I think if the Celtics fall into that trap fall into the trap of trying to now outscore the opponent instead of just playing your game, playing strong defense and winning the way you've been winning, then I think Indiana could find themselves, you know, taking a couple games from you. That's yeah. Pacers playing Pacers have had some success with the Bucks. It'd be interesting if they knocked them out in a potential two seven, which is in play as well. We'll get back to this in a little bit. We got Bobby jumping in from the garden uh, out of the locker room here. Yeah, I am worried about Crash Neesmith. Bobby, tell us what you know. Yeah, a lot of talk tonight about that zone, that level they got into in the fourth quarter here to separate themselves. It was amazing to look up after a blur of a fourth quarter and see them up 35 in a game that was pretty close. Felt like they were in in danger at different points. Yeah, Yeah. they looked like they could have been in danger at different points, but uh, they did keep the Thunder at arm's length, as you said, and then separate in a big way late. I know no Shea. I know no Jalen. But this Thunder team still entered this game dangerous, obviously because the Celtics have let down at different points against uh, opponents like this with this kind of injury status. But they handled them tonight pretty easily. Uh, and I think this is – a contrast of styles that had the potential to bother Boston. I know Joe talked about even on the broadcast, them getting back cut off and following a ton uh, in this game, but I feel like they punch back with physicality. The offensive rebounding in this game, overwhelming 27 second chance points, the putback of the season by Porzingis through Holmgren uh, in that first half. And then you have the three point shooting advantage that they obviously have here uh, as well as just an overall physicality, uh, advantage and the passing tonight great as well the the Celtics just kept finding different ways to separate themselves from what's obviously a pretty good Thunder team even without uh, Shea and Jalen I I still think they had the potential to come into this game and bother maybe even beat uh, the Celtics in a letdown but Boston ended up throttling them Uh, Hanlon Holmgren who had no real impact on this game and the bench again great good stuff from Hauser good stuff from Pritchard Horford really credited Pritchard's second half stretch uh, with getting the Celtics going. And they had to play fast tonight. They had to keep up with the Thunder. I'd credit that to some of the sloppiness. But once they tightened up the turnovers in the second half, as Joe said, it was just on to the races. And I was pretty impressed by this win. Not not blown away, not earth shattering by any means, but this is one of the best teams in the NBA. You went out and handled pretty easily tonight. Yeah. Stat, Stat of the night. Gordon Hayward minus 28 in 18 minutes. I didn't even, I didn't, even, I didn't, even, I don't even remember him playing. I just, pretty the only thing, the only, that's gone. yeah, the only thing I remember him being out there was when Persingas realized that he was guarding him and he just shot over him without jumping. That's what, that was my lasting memory of Gordon Hayward tonight. This was a big night yeah. for Porzingis, wasn't it? It felt like this was the first night where he got back to being that first half early season Porzingis. He did a little bit in the, and the automatic games. Porzingis, the automatic yeah. post. Yeah. Yeah, the little short uh, Playoff shot key. off glass early. The five blocks. And Jalen had some interesting comments after the game. I think, you know, we've talked a little bit about how this team isn't 
very critical on each other or tough on each other. The open accountability that we saw in 2022. Jalen had some comments after this game about how, you know, when Porzingis isn't flopping around, when he's really locked in on defense, that's when we're unbeatable. Uh, so he challenged Porzingis after this game to be more consistent defensively, to be the kind of defender that he can be. Because we saw in that Atlanta miniseries especially, he was not very good in those games. And I, he said to me, he's still ramping up back to 100% to some degree off the last injury. He's trying to get there by the playoffs. Uh, but Brown, in one of the rare instances this season, I thought uh, called on his teammate to raise his level, to be this kind of player consistently uh, and he said specifically when this is what kp is uh we'll, ra we'll rarely lose the less we'll lose so well i let, i love that about, let's ask your your opinion here on brown um what his post-game comments were kind of weird and cryptic about the hand maybe being a sprain maybe being a strain i think i'll be fine but who knows i'll play through it and see how it goes as long as um, it's not bursting no, it it it, it might have burst. It might have burst. It's a clean tear. What's your clean tear? I I gave my take. I want to hear your. We, we we gave ours earlier. Let's hear yours. Definitely looked like it bothered him at points. I couldn't get there as often tonight, and that left hand's been a strength of his this year, finishing around the basket. Uh, so obvious that it impacted him at points in this game, and he said as such. Uh, so it's something to keep an eye on. I don't get the management of it at this point. If it is bothering him, why is he playing? I, I think that's a valid point by a lot of people who have tweeted at me and asked that. And Joe obviously provided zero uh, my, insight on it. Well, so. my take is that there's medically nothing wrong with him. The doctors told him that the team told him that the team told him you're fine to play. Something's he doesn't love something that's going on. So he's talking about it being, Maybe a sprain and maybe a strain when it's probably neither. Um, and I, it doesn't mean it's not bothering him. I just don't think it's a major injury. He's not playing if it's a major injury. They're not, yeah, They're not idiots. They're not idiots. They're not idiots. They're not putting him out there if he if he's if he's a meaningless so game. Is it's a meaningless a game? OKC doesn't even have their stars in the damn game. So even if you do beat them, it's like okay, well, what's it mean? It's not really a it's not really a test against the best in that situation. Yeah, they blew him out, but it make, he's already hit his, you know, minimum to qualify for the awards. There's no real reason to play this game. I would have been fine if if he didn't play. I'd rather this, not play this game. To be this honest. smacks of I'm going to do my own research. You know, like the doctor said one thing, but I'm going to do my own research here. You know, like yeah. everyone should really do their own get, why 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 would he do that? Own, <laughs> medically because he's a kind of a quack that way but medically speaking you know like i'm gonna do, i'm gonna go do my own research you know yeah. that yeah. that's what it smacks of to me but that's that's i don't know me. he did take okay. a little bit of a spill in that pelicans game in the backcourt and seemed aggravated on that play so i think there is yeah. something there but you're right john it's probably well, not why major. play through it because like john said it's probably not something you need to sit out for so all right then. Let's go out so and that's play. not a concern I don't think it is. I don't think it's an issue. They're not letting him play if it's an issue. I, I'm sure it's bothering him a little, but I don't think they let him play if it's an issue. Done. Next. Done. So it's no Done. excuse. That, I mean, he played poorly. I, I, first half. He had a good fourth quarter, but I think he was a little sluggish uh, early on um, defensively. Well, John said it. This Thunder team bothers you athletically. He, yeah. The back cuts, the – Speed on transition, Giddy getting to the rim, blown by guys. All that happened in the first half. Uh, so it puts pressure on you. It, it definitely does. And I'm just so intrigued by this team. Like, are they a first round exit? Are they a finals team? I've really never seen, like, the only comparison I can think of is that 2012 Thunder team. And they had much more high, high end talent between three players. But this is similar where you have an MVP candidate. We have all of this young talent and a bunch of unsung guys who can produce. And they're in a loaded conference, so it's tough to tell what their ceiling is going to be. But there was some conversation tonight, and this could be the finals. I wouldn't put it out of question. And they handled the Celtics healthy last time around. So I'm putting some stock in this victory. I like this. I like how they went out and just handled this team uh, that they could see down the line. I'm not banking on it, 
But who knows how things go with injuries out west and just a gauntlet. Oh, I think they deserve to have some matchups. respect on their name. Yeah, they deserve respect. We talked about on Monday Night Bobby that they're not just SGA. You know, they've got a talented roster around their star player, and that's obviously helping him. You know, turn into the MVP caliber player that he's become this season. But they don't get a lot of credit. And tonight, again. I think they competed for three quarters uh, as best they could, but without, you know, not just SGA, but um, who's the other one out there? Uh, Jalen. Um, Jalen Williams. Yeah, Jalen Williams. Perfect example of a, of a really unheralded supporting player on this team that the, the, the average NBA fan or the casual fan probably doesn't really know anything about, right? So that's kind of what this OKC team is. So last year they came as a complete surprise. Um you know, just the way they competed and they made th things difficult. But I think we all didn't expect the jump they took this year. So that's probably where the, the bit of the disconnect is. But if you sleep on them, if you're an, a, a team in the Western Conference, you absolutely cannot sleep on this team because they will beat you if you do that. So, um, yeah, there's only a couple of things. I think Denver over them. Um, but them against Minnesota, I think it's a toss up. Yeah. And we drafted the NBA last night on Dome Theory. Why I don't know, but he went twenty six. Yeah. Uh, Zach, thank you for purchasing the merch. By the way, I just want to tell everybody out here: go get your merch. We have a merch store. Get your merch. merch. Go get some. Toss it up there, it. producer boy. Toss up our merch. There it is. There you go. Merch it up. There it is. Why isn't my picture up there? Uh, why is it Tangway? I want it to be me. Well, there's not enough Jimmy. Garden Report Jimmy. swag. Jimmy That's probably. All. There's not enough garden reports swag. It's the garden report show. Should have had Callahan on tonight. He covered the game here. Yeah. Is anybody um, buying a shirt with Jeff's face on it? Yes. That's funny. Callahan switches over around this time to to to, to basketball. Anyway, um, <laughs> let you guys know uh, prize picks. Another thing we want to talk about here on the Garden Report, one of our sponsors, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. All you got to do is what, Jimmy? More, More or, less. or less? That's it. That's it. You pick. Pick. Are you an, uh, up, are you an upper up guy? Who I, guess who I yeah. picked more on tonight? Who? Derek White. Oh, Bob. <laughs> sure, odds guy. This might have been his uh, worst game of the year offensively. Anyway, it's all you got to do here. You go in there, two to six stat projections. Uh, pick more or less on any on any stat projection put out there by a particular player. Uh, and that's it. And watch the winnings roll in. Uh, get moving on it as quickly as possible uh, and get involved with prize picks. All you have to do, download the app today. Use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to 100. I, Go check it out. Yep. I played last night. I, I did lose, but it was fun. Even when you lose, it's something to keep an eye. I mean, you don't want to lose, but it's fun. It's fun. I picked less. You're going to win. You're going to lose. He had more. I picked less points. I picked more points for Jimmy Butler. He had less. I thought Jimmy Butler was going to like play well last night against um, the Knicks. And you Josh can't Maddox, all go 60 and 16 right. like the Celtics. You're going to lose. Okay. You can. You can. I'm riding my I I have one. I won 50 bucks on a $5 play. And um still riding that. Excellent. So, moving on here, um, we're going to bring Joe Sway on. Joe Sway, what's up, buddy? What's up, guys? What's going hey, on? What's up, dude? Uh -uh. Hey, good luck. Good luck with that. Uh, you know, Jimmy, it, it, it gets better. You know, playing that yeah. stuff, playing yeah. that game. It's just playing. Anyway, um, just playing. Josue, what's your, Josue, What's your top takeaway? Uh, Chris Stapps, man. Chris Stapps Porzingis, uh, and I love the way he worded it uh, when speaking to us. It was uh, ramping up for a strong regular season finish. Because uh, let's face it, guys. You don't know nothing about the playoffs, man. And I love that because you know he's excited about it. I don't think anyone on this Celtics team has had more fun this season than Chris Stapps Porzingis. And I, and I think, you know, when you see what he's doing out there on the floor, um, it, like for Celtics fans, for guys like us covering the team, I mean, there's a little extra excitement here, right? I mean, clearly this is a player that Celtics obviously didn't have last year, but I think um, he's the biggest reason why they're so 
or big one of the biggest reasons why they're, they've been so dominant, especially in the Eastern Conference. And I think that carries over um, throughout the playoffs, obviously barring any injuries. But you know, this is exactly what you want to see. I mean, these this past four or five games, you know, like he's just in cruise control right now and everything's coming together so easily for him, uh, especially on the defensive end of the floor, which is something that Joe Mazzula talked about, how uh, it wasn't a matter of, uh, you know, Chris Stapp's being more disciplined on that end of the floor, but it was just a matter of getting used to things, the way the system works and uh, how timing is everything. And here we are in April and he's shown just how not only committed he is on that end of the floor, but just how he's able to adapt and just create defensive stops at the rim that just seem like unlikely at times. You know, there was one play in particular, I think it was, um, what was it, Giddy? No, it wasn't Giddy. It was someone, uh, I forget who it was. The one where he came from behind? Yes, yeah. Like he cleared Jalen. And he's thinking he's, he's good. Oh, I'm in the clear. And then Porzingis comes out of nowhere after scoring on the opposite end of the floor. I mean, like, that's the stuff that puts the team uh, ahead. You know what I mean? Like, that's like that stuff kills not only runs for opposing teams, but just overall, just like the the, the momentum, you know? And I feel like those are the, those are the type of plays that you're going to see, especially in the playoffs, where the, the entire league is going to see just how dominant uh, or how, how different the team is when he's out there and playing at this level. So I can't wait. The defense impresses me at times, and especially when he's out there with Horford. I love that combination, John. I know we've had many double big debates over the last three years. That look is excellent. And it's, it's going nice to be there. able to play different looks. That's the thing. Yeah. Is like it's, it's better when you can do what – when you can change up and do things differently and still beat teams is, is much better than when you've only got one gear, right? So, yes, it's nice to be able to dip into that double big whenever you need it and see some success there on those teams. It's nice to be able to play, a, you know, a three guard lineup from time to time if that's what the, that's the way you want to go. Like, I actually wish I'd like to see them do straight up small ball every once in a while just to see how that is with Tatum at the five. You've seen that like once or twice all year, but not really. But, yeah, I have, I'm not a, I don't I'm not opposed to double big. I just this team. I, I think the last two years, Bobby, the problem with it was you really only had two playable bigs. So you start them both and then it messes with your rotations. I love what they have going here because of the spacing and the, you know, the ability of the, the switching and everybody out there on the floor. And just to have the one guy kind of sitting back there in center field in Porzingis and waiting at the rim, I think it plays perfectly. I don't think you want to use it more than you're currently using it, but it's nice when you can. Yeah, especially Absolutely. when, uh, you know, if, if, if there stretches throughout the game where they're struggling in the playoffs, I, I think we're going to see this lineup. You know, I, I do think it's something that uh, Joe Mazzula is going to gonna fall back on in, in the playoffs. And, and I like it. You know, obviously, you know, you would like to see it against a, a, a team at full strength, especially a team like OKC playing without uh, two of their best scores. But, you know, um, it's, it's good to see them in stride the way they are right now, you know, <laughs> especially with the playoffs just around the corner. Can't not ask Bobby this question, but we ha can we all agree this was basically a playoff type rotation tonight? Mm. Facts. And it got chopped mm. off at what? It got chopped off at what number? Your third set. <laughs> Lemon squares. <laughs> yeah, he's he's not gonna play in a matchup like this. You know, he's your ninth rotation player. <laughs> <laughs> You have a guy it's in the who can shoot from the perimeter. So yeah, it's a matchup, Jimmy. Do you think so? I, again, I just I I don't I don't think there's gonna be a lot of minutes there for him in the playoff in the playoffs. But well, there's not. The, there's not gonna be a night. lot of minutes. It'll for be him. matchup based though, right, John? I I think if it's a, a team which matchup where... calls for Luke Cornett for real? Cleveland. <laughs> I mean, when you put it, no why? Uh, like <laughs> the folding chair that uh, you could see him that... against oh, no, Denver potentially. <laughs> He's your best pastry chef. <laughs> Listen, we talked about it the other night, John. I'm Joe sorry, said, I couldn't. I can't do the voice. Jimmy crushes it. I can't do the voice. <laughs> Joe said I'm not gonna the other it. night on the radio in Charlotte, we've gotten to those second unit looks all year. We've used all those guys successfully. We have to continue to use them, and that's not going to change in the playoffs. So unless he's lying, he's intending to use all these guys. We'll I think he will. I, I Joe think he will. Lie to you, Bobby. Joe wouldn't ever lie to you. Yeah, it wasn't me. It was Randy, but yeah. Listen, it, it, 
we can all agree that if there are minutes, they're not going to be a lot of minutes, and that's how it should be when you get to the playoffs. You you go. But like you feel eight, pretty good go about like this eight. eight yeah, you like the eight. You've got Horford and then Pritchard and Hauser have really rounded out the eight. Like you, I you love how this are okay when, when he that. plays. When he plays well, we can't talk about him. Is oh, Luke's coming up now? He doesn't play. I wasn't even going to mention him, and now it's a whole topic you here. On do you see how it goes? Of course, you're yeah. working. You're starting to get it. It goes now both you ways, get it. Bobby. What do you mean? Should we talk about uh... so when, when he has one good game out of ten, and I talk about it? You guys don't want to, but when he doesn't, play, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, let's talk look, about we're just playing. We're messing around. We're messing around. I'm more. I'm more talking about in general. I think you're going, it's not an, Tillman's not going to play a freaking second either. It's not an either, or I think you're pretty locked in with your eight. You will sneak a few minutes in from a couple of those guys, depending on the situation, foul trouble, whatever it is. But I think you feel pretty good about it, right? Like I think you, I I feel really good about the bench. This might be the first time the way Hauser and Pritchard played. I'd say the greatest thing that happened in the last, however many games here, you know, like 15, Whatever it is, the uh, Hauser, you know, being, you know, doing what he's done, uh, you know, before spraining the ankle and then coming back from it again, knocking down the threes and the Pritchard to his command of sec of the second unit offense as the point guard uh, and the way that he's able to distribute and really, really run the offense has been unfreaking believable. And I think you feel I like a out, ton John, better. Yeah. Six of his highest 13 assist games ever have come since March began. Right. It's amazing. He's that that's the biggest change for him because it's now it's like you you feel really good with him out there making good decisions before it was get his offense. Now he's making good decisions and getting other people buckets. It's it's like you actually now we've gone from surviving minutes to actually looking forward to to, to, to these minutes. Totally different vibe, right? I, at least that's at least that's where I am on it. I, it's much more confident in seeing those guys in there as opposed to like, oh geez, we gotta get gotta get them out of there. No, it's um, Max. it's what you want. I mean, this, this is this is what this is how it's supposed to be this time of year. It is so, nothing nothing unusual there. We yeah, talked about um, it Monday night. The Hauser, yeah, the know. Hauser, I think it was Monday. The night. Hauser revelation's been huge. That's pretty yeah. exact. Bobby took the words out of my mouth. Go on, go on, Bobby. I mean, you, you haven't been on the show long. He has nine games this year. We said this Monday, John. Nine games with set uh, five plus threes. If he has a game like that in the playoffs, you're winning. Yeah. So it's just huge, and they've been looking for a guy like that for a long time. Last year, you didn't have him as a postseason player. This year, you know he's going to be a staple. It's a huge difference over last year. There's so many differences going into this postseason versus last year. Too many to name. This is this is a significant one, along with the Pritchard development. And, you know, who knows if Gluck's in there or not. Just having one guy in that group who you know is going to perform every night, that could be the edge in any given game. So it continues to be an advantage. It's been an advantage for them all year. I still think they're first and plus minus with the bench. Um it's it's something that really gives you confidence. It's a different game in the playoffs. We got to see how these guys translate. But each performance just gives you more confidence in them. So I'm super confident in each one of those guys going into the playoffs. Even Tillman, who I think is just showing a little bit more something. I know he doesn't play in a game to like tonight, but every game I watch Tillman, I feel like he's showing a little bit more. So he's at least and a guy you can honestly- potentially angle for some minutes here. And I think you're going to feel five on the five to eight or five to eight minutes that that either Tillman or Cornette or whomever get in the playoffs, because I think you'll be able to sustain it with the way everybody else is playing around them. Um, We talk about like all the potential X factors here. Hauser, Pritchard, Porzingis being healthy or Porzingis being dominant might be the biggest one. It's hard to call a guy who's arguably been, you know, I mean, your second or third best player all year long here an X factor, but. It's again, it's almost like like stolen money to have him, you know, to even have him on your team and to be able to play at this level when you've also got, you know, the two Jays and everybody else around him. Uh, Here's Porzingis talking after the game about, uh, you know, he was great tonight. He still doesn't think he's all the way back. Spoiler alert. Producer boy. My legs are a little bit better. 
um, but uh, mostly it's just uh, starting to like turn up a little bit more, you know. Um, understanding that we have like playoffs soon, uh, I want to be, be, you know, at the best like best moment um, for the playoffs. And yeah, just getting into that mindset, and and uh, and yeah, finishing the regular season strong. That's that's what I'm trying to do. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah, that a boy. Um, he just looks so look happy. Look at that, okay. Bobby. What else he got? Again, we we we've been around the horn a couple of times. Anything else? <sighs> Jalen. Bobby, you, uh, you, you buying We could circle team? back to Jalen. Oh, we we hit on we hit on the injury, but why don't we, we hit on it a couple why times? Why don't we get take? How you feeling about um, it? You worried? You not worried? A little bit. A little bit. Um, I just, I just hope it's something that he can get used to. You know, and, and I'm sure he will. I just hope it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, it's flaring up this week in the middle of games three and four of a series you know what i mean like i'm just i just that's the thing that worries me you know that we'll get like good jalen and now oh he's a little sore or you know oh he committed six turnovers because he went left you know what i mean like i just that's the part that kind of where and i'm not just thinking about last year's eastern conference final game seven it's not just not just about that i mean i think a lot of what we've seen out of jalen this year you know he's continued to improve on the defensive end of the floor you know he, he set that goal he, he he's achieved it if you ask me i don't know if he's i love the defense NBA. i don't know if he's all nba first team but i mean he certainly he, he stepped it up a notch i mean they all have as a team but that's the only thing that that i'm worried about if, if that thing flares up and you know it's something that uh it's a nagging injury that that, that kind of circles back mid-may or so or late may you know before easter conference final series or something like that that's my only thing so i just wanted to throw that out there for you guys because I, I didn't i wasn't in on that conversation he had the chase down block or strip, whatever it was. Uh, he had a charge take, I think, at one point. Uh, he had the steal and breakout uh, against Wallace there and on the dunk. Uh, there's a disruptiveness to his defensive game as Jimmy takes off that I mean, <laughs> they need. They need that. And I asked him, you know, is it something the coaches, you know, system, like what's led to his defensive turnaround this year? And he said that it's been him embracing individual matchups more. You know, he said those certain matchups Smart might have taken in the past as an example uh, that he's embracing now. And I think we've said that about him before. When he can key in on a matchup, an individual, that's where he's at his best. And they've allowed him to do that more often this year, which plays to his strength, probably gets him in the right mindset. You want him to be playing team basketball on that end, but you also want to play to a guy's strengths. And he's... He's just rolling on that end. Horford said he should be first team all defense. I think he should be in consideration for, you know, one of those spots on the either team. And one thing I haven't loved about their defense this year is they don't force turnovers. They're not a team that goes out and disrupts like those EMA defenses do. They play more analytical, as we've talked about, John. But when he gets aggressive and turns up the heat in that backcourt, they can get disruptive. And I feel like, you know, I mentioned the double big combination earlier. There's certain things, again, to the Pelicans game. They're turning up the heat defensively in a way that really excites me because we know how dangerous they are offensively. If they can be dangerous defensively, that's scary because I feel like they have a ceiling on that end that no other team can get to. And I think it's who they should be. They aren't going to have the best offensive nights every night. They're going to go cold from three, which is still what they rely on immensely offensively. You have to be able to really disrupt the game defensively to get yourself out on the run, get easy baskets, and just take advantage of a variety of opponents. And they can do that. So what Brown said, Porzingis being consistent on that end, them going to those bigger lineups and having success, and the guards, the forwards all playing with a motor – on that side, yeah, that's what I think drives your championship run. You're going to hit some shots some games. You're going to go in these blowouts. But when you're in a tight game, you have to hang your hat on defense. I've said it for the whole time I've been on this show. I still feel that way. Well, it's the one thing that you know that, like, when if, if things aren't going, if your shot isn't falling, what keeps you into it, what keeps you in the game is exactly that. A team like the Celtics that's going to keep 
keep its approach going. They're going to keep jacking threes. They're going to keep playing their style. And eventually it's going to, you know, it's, it, it, it's happened all year, you know, even bad, bad shooting first halves will turn around for them. The defense is what keeps you alive. Right. So like, it's not an option. What, the, the, the games where things get loose on them is when they're they're hitting everything in the first half, but then they just decide to stop playing defense. Then the shots don't fall. Then the other team comes roaring back, and you've seen that happen. You saw Indiana do it to them, um, you know, last time they played. So, yeah, that's – defense is key for sure. Uh, we want to mention, again, the voting is still going on. You can continue to vote on Twitter. Luke Cornett may not have played tonight – but you might very well be looking at an all Luke Cornette finals right now wow. as Lemon Squares uh, was a big, what does that big, say? Uh, huh? Lemon Squares is ahead of you got Tangwade. As we uh, talk about him too much. <laughs> he's your third center. He says we talk, it says it says that the joke he's your third is working. The joke is working is what it means. The the yeah. bit is working, Bobby. <laughs> it's working. Yeah, that we we need to cup we need to keep coming at you a little bit. We got a. Uh, I think. I think to it's, celebrate. It's red meat. It's red meat. Okay. It's a, It's <laughs> the people love it. I think well, he's helps. your third center. I think the he's your third center is gonna win. And to celebrate, I told him that we got to get a t-shirt number forty with he's your third center yeah. on it. I think. All right. It's let's 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 for, for the kid. You know, for the kids right now. Let's play. Let's play the clip one more time. Luke get when Luke. What do you want? What, you know, what do you want us to do? Cut him? You know, like he gets really. Yeah. Gets what do you want for your third center? <laughs> He's your third center, I, John. I, I hate the Luke talk, and I hate the Tillman talk. We keep criticizing this guy. What do you He's want from him? And done more than anyone has ever expected, except me. He's your third center. Yeah, the pacing is impeccable. That's <laughs> <laughs> like Bobby's speech he's pattern, a, that was dead on. Like that's he's your third on. Who's your third center? Yes. <laughs> what do you want from him, John? <laughs> and it's so true. It is what, true. Good. We did. I try to make the case who's the best third center in the league. I got some good names like Nas Reed and Isaiah Harenstein, so he's not. But he's up there. And listen, when your third center makes a mistake, it's fine because he's your third center. You don't expect him to be perfect. And, and he doesn't deserve get to get crapped on. It, it, it's, a, it's, right. a, it's a bit. We go back and forth. The, the entire joke has always been, Bob, we actually agree with Bobby for the most part that Luke is about as good as he is, sort of. But Bobby takes it just here. And yeah. then we have to knock it down to reality. And it makes it feel like we're shitting on Luke, but we're not. Everybody, yeah. I think, likes Luke and thinks he's made terrific contributions all year long. We really have. But I think Bobby just, just, elevate, yeah. just elevates him a little bit past him. So we got to pull him back in. That's all that happens. That's all that happens. And then and we, then, gotta, we got to pull him back. Luke will have, like, uh, you know – <laughs> Not above average, but above what you expect from him type of performance. And Bobby's like, what's today, guys? And we're like, Bobby, we know like he's we, he's not a bad player. But you well, have well, him, you like, wouldn't know it reading the chat school. sometimes. You might. He's, he's your third sinner. <laughs> he's your third sinner. <laughs> that's the I next really have to yeah, Bobby, you, Bobby, you win, you win this short. year. You 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 win the Luke <laughs> Cup. Absolutely. This year. Absolutely, he, ex he exceeded expectations. You you absolutely win. Uh, the All right, I'll, yeah, sure. I'll take it. I'll take it, it. It's a victory, but it's a fun bit, so we keep it going. Anyway, we're gonna wrap. We're back. A couple more games this week, playing out the stretch. Celtics get the sixty win. Celtics clinch the number one overall seed in the oh, NBA. Oh, want everybody to see this. Two. Sixty wins means the hard hat comes out the first time. Huh? I want go. everyone to see that it's it's right by my side, ready to go oh, on. Man, the springs is here. It's yeah. yeah, he's your third center, number oh, yeah. forty. We're making that jersey. It's gonna say forty. He's your third center on the back. That's it. <laughs> there aren't many guys. <laughs> there aren't many guys in the league I like more than Luke. But one we know. Of them's we know. To the garden. One of them's coming to the garden on Friday. Demontis oh. Sabonis. That guy is otherworldly. <laughs> He's so good. He's, He's been great. He just, he, I think he just broke yeah. the modern NBA record for double doubles in a row uh, since yeah. the merger. And 
It'll be an MVP votes this year. So he's going to be a lot to handle. MVP votes. It's amazing. It might be the first the ha- time a guy gets MVP votes that didn't make the All-Star game. Well, he finished sixth yeah. last year or seventh. So he's in that range. No, I, I love Sabonis. I've always been I a think, huge Sabonis guy. It happened to Butler a couple of years ago, too. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, Everyone talks about that trade. They always, always talk about Halliburton. But Sabonis is doing – amazing out there in sacramento it's just he's out in sacramento. he's been great yeah so we're back yeah, friday um friday and sunday with two more games at the garden we are going to wrap it once again uh vote you still have time to vote in the bracket uh you have time to go out and get these awesome shirts here that we got today yeah. bobby got one too uh a lot of fun oh yeah uh, sure. we... how's it look yeah i love it same color or different colors Take all nice different white. colors all good stuff yeah, oh, yeah. nice uh, but yes, thank you guys for hanging out. We will see you guys again on Friday. Hey, Amit's got an outro for us, I think. No, he doesn't. He said he was going to work on an outro. He had a phenomenal game. Phenomenal. Forfeit's out. I think it's an option. <laughs> that did not sound like a chair. It was a freaking chair. It does sound like a chair.